but because people, when they see things, they see in terms of their own concepts. That's how perception works. We have these concepts on the inside, so to speak, in mind, and then we perceive a world which really isn't out there. It's really in there, but it seems like it's out there, uh, in which our concepts are reflected. So they would say, oh, your wife this, and your wife that. I would just play along, like, okay, well, now I've got a wife tonight. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, I kind of, I'll roll with it and go with it and this and this. Or sometimes, sometimes they would kind of look at me and the, if I was traveling with a, a female travel partner or something and they would say, um, are you a couple? And I'd say, a couple of what? Uh, because when your mind's in wholeness, you just don't think in those terms. Really, it's thinking. It's the concepts that bog us down. So I'd say, a couple of what? And they go, oh, come on, you know, that's, you know what I'm talking about. But it's, it really is kind of fun for me to look at that whole idea, like Arma was talking about, like with relationship, it's like, isn't that funny, where is the line, when, when people ask you if you're in a relationship or not in a relationship, where is that imaginary line? Where do you cross over that line? It seems to be very subjective and, you know, it's different. Some, some may say, I am, and then the other one goes, we are? What? what? When did we get in a relationship? My God! What happened? It's like, what does that mean to you? You know, it's, it's all just concepts in the mind. And in the end, what we're doing to get to that state of fullness that we were talking about is empty the mind of all the concepts. And it's quite delightful actually to be empty of concepts because then you're sourced. Then moment by moment you're just given what you're to say, what you're to do. You don't have guilt and hang-ups based on expectations. Um, not, not too long ago, I think, um, I think it was maybe uh, a number of months ago, I was over in Spain and, and I was asked to perform a wedding down on the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. So I was down there in the Canary Islands and, and I was giving a talk the night before the wedding. I'd never met the bride and groom and I didn't know it but the bride and groom were in the audience. But I was just being my Christ self and, you know, letting these ideas pour through. I didn't know the bride and groom were in the audience. And I said, you know, the best wedding vow ever, I was happy to throw it out from the Spirit, is I love you now. Uh, not till death do we part. That's, that's morbid. Uh, but actually, I love you now. And, and, and then I said, it was quite hilarious and comical, and I said, and then you, and then during the reception, you can whisper into each other's ear, we have no future together. <laughs> you know? And, but it's true. If we really are honest, we don't have a future together. We just have a present together. When we're present, we're, we're filled. When we start to think about hypotheticals of the future, and what's going to happen, and will you still love me tomorrow, Carol King. No, you don't have to go there. So anyway, I didn't know the bride and groom were there. When it came to get married, I, I met with the bride and groom and they were all happy and the families were there and everything. And I said, okay, we need the, some wedding vows. And they were like, we want the vow that you talked about last night. We want to take that vow. Of course, they were in Spanish, so I just trusted them. I hope they said that. Uh, but you know, in, in, I don't know Spanish. I'm, I'm just officiating. I'm just saying, I now pronounce you one in Christ. Uh, that's my thing I say at weddings. So actually, they both spoke, uh, I love you now, in Espanol. And then I played, um, I played uh, Ave Maria. Uh, and everyone was, oh, just moving slowly in the twilight to Ave Maria. It was a very mystical kind of wedding. But really, that's what we're talking about. It, that for many people, they could say, well, you know, that's, that's just not a very practical wedding vow. I think it's the most practical, because it's the only one that's attainable. I love you now. 
read Eckhart Tolle's book, you know, The Power of Now. That if you really see it, he's talking about, that's, that's all we've got, really. And that's really fun, because when we really admit that that's all we've got, you see how free you feel. You feel really free and really intimate and really connected. When you get on the timeline, then it gets into expectations, you promised me, you said that, you made a commitment, how dare you do that, I'll see you in court, and it just goes downhill from there. But when you live in the joy of the moment, then you really have no worries and no concerns. So that's what, that's what I was really meaning when I was talking about that. Can you speak a little bit about uh, being in that place and trying to then um, interact with the rest of the world that is not, that is on a different that is on a different plane, a different level of experience? And you trying to stay in that place, and there are people who are trying to get you under contract, or get you under commitment, or get you to do something, and you're trying to maintain your your place and uh, and then still interact with them. Can you talk about that. Yeah, that's actually how our talk started tonight, with the softness. Maybe you can just share a bit more about that, because that softness and that stillness is really not kind of, it's not really an interactive experience. It, it's more of a, ref, it's like a reflective experience or an extending experience, but it's not really interactive in the sense of trying to get the world to Understand. line up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more that Wherever your mind is at, it will be reflected. So I would say the short answer would be really being uncompromising with your heart and, and with what resonates very deeply in your heart. And by this no compromise, you will extend who you are. And you just let it come. Like in the four years that I've known Armel, you know, she, I, like she was saying, wear your heart out on your sleeve. It, it was like from the beginning, I could tell that, that you were just pouring your emotions out. You couldn't hide them, even though people around you were uncomfortable, that you were, too, you know, too judged, too raw, you know, too open. You know, these are the kind of things, and even you thought it was a bit of a curse, you know, to not have a, you know, a bit of a, of a filter to hold it in, but it just couldn't be held in. But then, in the parable of Armel, there came things that, that she had to face in her mind that, that would be considered pretty major things in the world, like, like the death of a son. You know how if you read the psychological books, if you have the death of a child or the death of a partner, you know, and there's certain things that are high stressors in terms of, of the human uh, existence, it's just they're very high. So when we would join together, it, it would get to the point where if there were still like bubbles of grief uh, still in the mind that had to come up over the death of a young child, you know, the memories of that um, coming up, and then let it up, and then as you fully, fully let it up into healing and forgiveness, and you really give it over to the light, then that's part of the transformation of the mind. Another one was, uh, wasn't too long ago, where I remember you take, took a trip over to Europe and you were, your son had died a while back, but you were looking for the father of, of the son to connect. It felt very strongly like you needed to connect with him. And go over to Europe, find him, find the father of the son and connect and connect, connect. And then she calls me up on Skype and she goes, he's dead. So that's another interesting little, okay, here comes another bubble. I, was, I really wanted to connect with and meet the father of, of the son, you know, the, reconnect and, and then he's dead, he's gone. I can't speak the words to him, he's, he's gone. So that, and then every, I think even more recently, you know, going through a divorce, but you're calling it the most, a joyful divorce. That's not usually, you don't you hear that very often. I don't hear that in the world. People don't talk about a joyful divorce. You know, it's like, what? What do you mean a joyful divorce? You know, a divorce is usually a, just like the death of a, of a 
son or the death of a partner, a divorce is another one of those things that, that is very, very traumatic, egoically, because there's a lot of attachment. Uh, and it seems almost built up attachment, but that's back on the timeline. You know, if you're in the present moment, that's going to be your healing through that whole thing as well. So I think it's just, all. these are all just parables, because now it's, it's like, there is no our mouth, she says. You know, so, you know, it, but it takes a lot of mind training to empty the mind out from not feeling identification with a personal self. And those are all very helpful steps because those are just symbols of there is another way. You don't have to hold on to those timeline memories. You know, like the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind with Jim Carrey, you know, how they're, he's running around, he and Kate Winslet, you know, Jim Carrey, are trying to avoid the deletion process. But in the end, the Holy Spirit wants to delete all of our memories of time and space, so that we can return back to the pristine stillness of I amness, which is prior, you know, what Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, before time was, I am. And, and it's just beautiful, I think, that you've been able to just give yourself so fully over to this purpose, and that's what she's talking about when she says uncompromising. Those are not, in the world's terms, small things. Death of a son, death of a partner, divorce of a partner, it was a very guided, joyful uh, marriage at times, <laughs> and but but the divorce was, you said, more joyful than in the marriage. In the marriage. <laughs> so that gets people like, okay, how is it that your divorce is more joyful than the marriage? There, there's there's an inroads there to something very deep, because these are not you know things to be just brushed under in a denial sense. You actually have to face these things, and and that's been part of the awakening. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because whatever it is that you need to face, it's to remember that it's all an opportunity to remember who you are and be absolutely uncompromising with that. Whether, like for the divorce, I, I have been guided to get married with Eric four years ago, I think. Um, at the beginning when I, I started my path in the community and it was really beautiful the way it happened it was very miraculous I just received the guidance and I didn't know him I didn't meet him yet I heard about him and 15 days later we were married and it was very intense because the purpose of the marriage was awakening to our true nature giving our life over to God and follow the guidance and fully being dedicated every moment together to join in truth to remember the innocence that we are and to let up really let everything up so that it could be released and so it was very intense certainly the, the first six months were whoa I never lived something so intense but truly yeah the marriage wa was guided and the divorce was guided too and and when the symbol has served its purpose, there is no need to keep the, sing the, the symbol any longer. It would be like holding onto a, a, a toy, you know, a little, a little car when you are 40. What would it be for? It's like, there's the point you need to let it go. And so it felt very given and yeah, and it's just realizing again, we're not separate. We're just seemingly taking different roads, but the love that we feel for each other is just amazing. We just know that we'll always be together and and we'll always be in support to each other. And there is a tremendous joy really with just the release of the symbol and allowing the spirit to guide my life instead of wanting my life to be a certain way. Mm -hmm.